QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021 lists. Let's get into it with Intuit. QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We currently have the home page open. You can open the home page by going to the company drop down, selecting home page. We also have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view drop down, selecting the open windows list and having this carrot on or off to see or not see the open windows. We're now going to be discussing the term list. Now, remember, as we look at some of the terminology, you need to know terminology basically for QuickBooks and terminology for accounting. There's going to be some overlap. In other words, uh, typically you have accounting terminology, which you're going to have to understand. And then, of course, QuickBooks has its own terminology as well that uh, is going to be that's kind of generated from the use of the software. So you have to understand both of those terms. We saw a little bit of this as we go when we think about the profit and loss instead of the income statement. When we think about what the term bill means as a voice as opposed to what invoice means, it's kind of different depending on, you know, the directionality of where of whether you're going to be billing and invoicing and so on and so forth. Lists is another area where oftentimes people will be referring to particular things uh, with regards to lists. And I believe the generation of that kind of that kind of thing is just simply due to the fact that QuickBooks put that drop down under lists here. So on QuickBooks desktop, any kind of QuickBooks desktop user, if you say lists, they probably are going to start to think of the major two lists, which are going to be the chart of accounts and the item lists, although we'll have some other lists down below. So just realize that again, that term is kind of uh, a term that that will pull up what people think of in terms of lists for QuickBooks, possibly not for more accounting uh, in in general. And even if you go into the online version, they don't have the same kind of drop down feature, but you still hear the terminology of lists when you're referring to the chart of accounts or to the or to the items lists in particular. The items are, are often you know, going to be going to be housed in this concept of lists. So if we go into the lists drop down, these are often going to be things that you're going to have to be putting together in order to set up uh, the company file. So the major lists will be the chart of accounts and the item list. Those are the two that should pop into your mind first. We're going to look at each of those because they're very important to the setup process in future presentations. But the chart of accounts, of course, are going to be the accounts that will be on the balance sheet and income statement. Item lists are going to help us to, to set up basically invoices and other data input forms. They include inventory items and the uh, inventory items and the service items that help us to populate and make the data input much easier. We'll take a look at those in more detail in the future. Fixed asset items our lists, uh, if we're going to be adding basically the detail for the fixed assets, those are going to be things like building, uh, you might you might call them depreciable assets, you might call them property, plant and equipment or PP and E for short. Now, oftentimes, you're going to have the detail for your property, plant and equipment will be helped or housed outside possibly with the use of tax software. That's because the tax software is often going to be something that uh, you're going to have to have the detail in anyways in order to calculate tax depreciation so you could work with the cpa firm oftentimes that's the case to help you with the tax schedules to give you them and the depreciation schedules that could also be generated on a book or tax basis from tax software oftentimes but note that in general you want to have basically your your fixed assets that you're going to put on the books as an as an asset and then depreciate over time you need to have them listed out somewhere to support the the accounts that are going to be on the balance sheet for accumulated depreciation and depreciable assets and this chart could basically help you to kind of list out those assets uh, as you purchase them they can also be useful to list them out here uh, even though you might not be calculating the depreciation yourself and still possibly be dependent on outside software or tax software to do so this could give you a nice list for you to gather that information and provide it to the tax preparer at the at the end of the year Note that when you purchase property, plant, and equipment, you're not going to purchase, it's not like a lot of transactions when you're thinking about large pieces of equipment, things that are going to go on the books as an asset that are going to be depreciable. So that means that you want to, you'll be able to list them out in more detail and there shouldn't be, it shouldn't be too burdensome because it's not something that happens every day. Uh, so that's going to be one of the lists here. We all, and we might take a look at more of that in a, in a section after we run through basically the practice problem, how to basically use these lists and thinking about how you might integrate that with the, uh, with the help from the CPA firm as well. So we'll talk about property, plant, and equipment as we go through the practice problem, and we will record the property, plant, and equipment. We won't be using this lists item within the practice problem. We may take a look at it in some section 
and a section after the practice problem to get into it in more detail. Then we have the price level lists. Price level lists provides you more detail within the pricing. And then we have the sales tax code list. Sales tax code list giving you uh, the items whether something's going to be taxable or not. We'll talk more about that when we set up the sales tax. So when you set up the sales tax, it's a you have different items that you're going to have to use to set up the sales tax. These help you know if something is going to be subject to sales tax. So it's like a list that helps you to set up other lists. So for example, if I was to go into lists and look at the item lists, such as inventory items and sales items that we sell, if I look at an inventory item down here, if I go into the inventory item, it's indicated here that it's taxable. So that's going to be a taxable item, as we saw in our sales tax code. So tax indicates that it's taxable. If I go back to, to my item list, and I look at a service item up top, then it says, you know, it's non, non-taxable. So that's, that's what those sales tax items do. If we go then to, to the drop down once again, we have the sales tax, we have the payroll item lists. So if you're processing payroll, the lists are going to be important for you to basically run the payroll processing system. Now the lists for payroll will typically be set up as you process payroll, as you set up payroll, the pay payroll process. When you set it up, if you buy the payroll, we'll go through the process of setting this item up. Uh, and then if you do the manual payroll, you'll basically be setting these up as you go, at least as you add employees as well. So we'll actually take a look at setting these up uh, when in the practice problem on the manual payroll. If you want to see the paid payroll, we might have some more information at the end of the practice problem. Uh, so you can get some more detail on those. But again, lists are supporting the processing of the transaction, the running of the payroll and making that they're kind of the things behind the scene that makes the payroll process a little bit easier to do because the lists will help you determine uh, where th certain things are going to be recorded on the um, on on the financial statements, on the balance sheet and the income statement. So if I go back up to the lists, then we got the payroll lists. We've got uh, other name lists. So these are going to be people we had when you set up new uh, new items or or when you have payments or receipts. You typically have to have uh, a customer or vendor, so, but uh, so you could set up when you pay someone or receive a deposit. Usually when you get money from somebody, it's usually you set them up as a customer. And then when you pay someone, you set them up as a vendor. But some people don't really qualify as a vendor or a customer. Like the bank isn't someone that we really are paying as a typical vendor, although we might have transactions to and from the bank. So we put them into the other transactions. So this is where you'd find those items that you listed under other when you set them up to, usually when you made a transaction to them like like the banks and then if we go to the lists drop down we have the other names customer and vendor profile lists so sales rep lists customer type lists vendor type lists job type lists term lists uh, customer message lists uh, payment method lists ship via list and vehicle lists and then we have the templates down here under the lists memorized transactions so if you have memorized transactions they would be here uh add edit multiple lists entries and then the manage the groups so again if you if you say lists in quickbooks then people will this kind of drop down will typically come to mind and the major two lists that people will start to think of if they work in quickbooks a lot especially the desktop version are going to be the chart of accounts and these item lists they may even refer to the chart of accounts or item lists as simply uh, lists sometimes.